this is going to be a long video and this is my fifth take of it and I'm so I apologize if I'm a little frustrated um, keep in mind that all commands I'm entering into the terminal are one-handed and in the dark because of this fucking phone but anyway I'm gonna start off by showing you recovery mode and trying to walk you through it really quick and um, tell you the shortcomings, why I haven't released it yet. And then we're going to come back and go into Android debug mode and explain why I haven't released the source code yet. So let's get started. Um, just search around on YouTube for the spot you want. If this is too annoying, I, I apologize. There's just so much information I'm trying to convey here at once. So you don't see that detecting Android x86. That's because we're sending the console output to TTY2 to mute this main terminal. The font just changed as UV is a frame buffer overload or overriding. We boot with modes, no mode set, and then a custom UV is a FB flag that I made in the init script because the normal video colon or video equal UV is a frame buffer doesn't seem to work right. But, um, this phone and this LCD really don't get along, but the colors are correct. This is a purple theme. I always theme my twerps purple when I compile them from code. Um, uh, there's a couple of things I want to point out in this before I go show you the source. Um, one, you have to double tap to activate anything. It's weird. Like, it's accurate. It works fine. Okay, that one we don't have to double tap, but literally everything else we have to double tap. And double tap that. Single tap. It, it, it's, uh, it's a thing. See, one, two. Like one, 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 two, one, one. So it, it's, what if I tap here? That unchecked system. Like, there's still stuff to work on with the touchscreen. And then enable or disable enable compression. Um, select storage. So it's going to offer USB drive one and two. These are literally just SDB one and SDB or SDC one for this particular setup because I know in other systems that can support multiple drives that could be a problem. This specific system that I'm writing this for only supports one internal drive I figured this is okay so this is actually the SD card slot so we're gonna select drive 2 which is the USB drive that was the slowest most dramatic thing ever but another thing here is it doesn't know the serial number I'm working on a script you'll see that in the source part to try to pull in the data from DMI, but I'm just having mundane issues like the shell script not doing its job. It won't even echo. Like, it's just something silly that I'm overlooking, probably. But that's this. It works great, except for the issues I pointed out. The time is an hour off, but I didn't go into the time zone. I'm sure that's all that is. Um,. So we're going to cancel this, actually. Um, oh, one more thing to point out is um, when you're building twerp, you get an option to define never unmount system. So no matter how hard you try, you're not unmounting system from the GUI. Um, data is not one of the options, but I patched it to become an option. So you can't unmount data either. You can on mount your drives though that, that that's no problem and see now well maybe it's not really on mounting there's more stuff to go through yet but for now i'm going to show you apparently it's also not saving settings because i told it not to do that already uh fucking turn back on hmm sneaky little bugger 
I really don't like their app and how aggressive they are about it, but I'm not getting into that in this video. What we will now get into is the reason why it's so hard for me to release source code. Take three. So we are booting into the normal Android x86 boot mode, and this is what a little bit more in depth as to why it's hard for me to release it on Git because while I did do patches on the build side, a lot of it's also done on the client side. So I'll show you that now. And if we look inside the Android x86 install directory, we see a bunch of extra stuff that's normally not there. We got expanded RAM disks to work on and for reference. Um, we got extra scripts here. So, basically what happens is when you build the RAM disk, when you build the recovery image in the Android build system, you're going to get the recovery image. And then I copy that to USB, mount the USB here, and then we run this script. Which basically uh, mounts the drive, copies it over here, unmounts the drive, makes sure we're in a source directory, run my other script and then sync to disk so the other script is what pretty much does all the magic and again all this is why it's hard for me to release this as a source package because this is designed to be done over here and uh we have a custom boot script which is basically just a. uh I'll go over it quick, but it's basically just this the primary init functions of the original Android x86, but with the Android... Uh, how do I explain it? Basically, we're just setting values for the kernel. Like, I only kept those lines. So, this script. First, we extract the RAM disk. We insert the custom RC. We try to create this DMI gathering script, which isn't working yet. Um, we trash any lib modules or firmware that's in the RAM disk, which by default is none. Fancy script for showing the output on the same line. And then we go through a template file, which is just pretty much ls-1 of the kernel directory with certain modules and firmwares taken out to reduce the size of the RAM disk because we're not needing sound, network, Wi-Fi, all that stuff, so we get rid of it. Um, if it's a directory, make it. If it's a file, copy it. Repack the RAM disk, and then uh, clean up temp directory. And uh, the the kernel on here is custom. This will probably work with a normal kernel, no doubt. Actually, it's just that. I had to patch the kernel to get the touchscreen to work on this model. That's in another thread on this forum. And if you're watching this from YouTube, the link to that forum will be in the description. Um, kernel in an RD tool is just a little script to make life easier when you're continuously packing and unpacking RAM disks. Again, I'm typing in the dark here with one hand and it's kind of annoying. So there's nothing fancy about this script. It's just um, you pass it an X and it extracts. You pass it a P and it creates. It's just literally to make life easier. Um, the next step would be the in it. Or, well, I'm just gonna cat the template file so you can actually see what it looks like really hard doing this in the dark oh. maybe this will work without me messing up the camera 
So yeah, just a list of files and their directories. Not a big deal. Um, the rec.rc is the file that we inject. Like I said, it's pretty much the uh, all the tweak kernel setting lines. We do have a few things here. I mean, that one was from Android x86, but we're doing this for the USB drives. We're doing this for our data workaround. That's our attempt to run the DMI script that's not working yet. And then basically just the uh, initial tweak lines from the original Android x86. It's nothing really special. This can actually come out. Um, the next step would be to show you the modifications to the actual Android NNRD. Or I should say the Android x86 pre-Android NNRD. So literally we just edited the main init script. And this is a... Uh, just got a few extra things in it like... Um, here's one during the check route because my end goal is to get this to be able to run it off an iso so say on a hypothetical situation you installed android x86 on your hard drive you went to install exposed framework something went horribly wrong now it won't boot um you boot off the iso to get into recovery even though i suppose it would work also on the install but say for some reason it doesn't boot recovery off the hard drive at all so you would boot it off the iso and so we are detecting the boot system like we normally would but we're also testing if it's writable i'm not a hundred percent sure if this is correct yet so don't go implementing this because i'm mostly working on twerp itself before i'm worried about if it can boot off an iso but that's my attempt so far next is I need to do something about this because honestly, this line is in Android x86 in its script by default and it doesn't work. I say that because if I delete that file, we do not end up in BusyBox. I have to figure out what went wrong there. Um, this is just changing the uh, default line to say looking for writable, but it doesn't matter because it's hidden on the second console. That was written before that change. Um, Basically here, if recovery, then load the recovery RAM disk. Otherwise, load the Android RAM disk. Um, other uh, modifications here. We Before we root into Android for recovery, we want to still be able to access the Android x86 directory with the kernel, the recovery RAM disk, the data in the system. So we make a bind to source under Android as well. The modules, this is the important part. Um, obviously, original Android x86 uses modules installed to the hard drive or the system partition. We want to be able to do it without it. So, you know, we're just making our setup inside of the system just like you guys normally would, except for we're linking to the RAM disk. This is an interesting part. This is how we... Uh, this is how I do the UVs of frame buffer. Um, the proper way to do it with the kernel is video equals UVs of FB, colon, resolution, comma, attributes, whatever. It doesn't work. I'm guessing that's designed to work with standard Linux in it and not our in it. And I really don't feel like writing a parser for it. So what I did is I made a custom one. You, you would just define u visa fb equals one to your kernel to get a 10 24 by 768 16 bit screen or if you don't define one you can actually define this line yourself so say you have a 1080p screen and you want it to boot at 1080p you would pass u visa fb equals 1080p or rather 1920 by 1080-16 or whatever you guys get the idea so this just sets up the u visa frame buffer 
this will run unconditionally. So even like I did not put a recovery check on here because this is a kernel flag, right? So just don't pass it while booting recovery. Not a big deal. So there's that. Um, other modifications are going to be down here. These are mostly for my specific device. We have to give it a couple of seconds for it to settle. And then we probe for the touch screen. Um, recovery specific. So for recovery, we, we want to stop the blinking cursor. So even if we boot with console equals slash dev slash TTY2, we still get a blinking cursor on TTY1. So this shuts that up. Otherwise, there would be a part of the twerp that's just with a blinking cursor because twerp does raw frame buffer. I don't remember if I covered that in this take. So if I did, I'm sorry. This is my fifth take. But basically, uh, twerp uses raw frame buffer draws. So if you have a console and you have twerp, they're going to be fighting for priority of the frame buffer and that's because frame uh twerp isn't designed like other frame buffer applications it's designed for phones and devices that aren't dumping their console to the frame buffer this can be worked around we would have to edit menu i and twerp and it's just out of my realm this works fine for me so i think that's it for the in it rd system but you're starting to see why I can't just push stuff to GitHub. I may try to figure out a way to do it. I will definitely be pushing my modifications to the device tree and bootable slash recovery. But as for all of this integration, the NNRD, the RAM disk, the modules, I guess I can push my scripts, the script directory but mostly it's going to be one of those pull it apart and figure it out yourself kind of deals pretty much like i had to with android and nrd um not trying to be rude about it it's just work i'm not willing to do personally for for free anyway like i really gotta start investing my time in non-hobbies like this and actually making money especially with youtube getting rid of partners and whole nother tangent let's stay on topic um that's pretty much it um a few things i have tried in the past in case you have an idea to try it that won't work are um instead of it building the modules into the ram disk build them into a separate squash file system it did work, it did load modules, but for some reason my touchscreen refused to initialize, which makes me re think some dirty modules like this touchscreen want right access to the module folder, so it's better just to put it in the RAM disk because it does have that RAM disk write ability that Squash does not. Um, that's pretty much it we're at almost the 20 minute mark i can't really think of anything else to add to this but yeah that's my progress so far